How are you anyway, Pete? Now, today, you're in Birmingham, where I spent many years of my life. All right, you're there, you're there, you uh, and, and you look, um, I don't know, you look like you're in one of our newest prisons there, but at least you, are you not staying with Barb this week? You're not staying with Barb this week in the B&B? &B? No. No, Barb did well last week. Uh, steak and chips was the last one, but no, I'm in a hotel this time. Um. And yeah, here at Conservative Party Conference, very different vibe here in Birmingham, it must be said. A bit more positive, a bit more chipper. And I've actually just come out of a session there, a uh, Q&A session with Tom Tugendhat and Kemi Badenoch. There's one for the other two tomorrow, but uh, certainly lots of rounds of applause, a few standing ovations for a few things that they were saying as well. Jeremy, Tom Tugendhat, talking about how he wants to cap migration at 100,000 legal migrants. Kemi Badenoch saying that she wants... Uh, society where we no, no, uh, don't talk about people's uh, skin as much as we talk about their hair colour, for example. It should just be all the same, she says. So some interesting messages there, including about reform of the Conservative Party. Uh, that's what they've been talking about. Isn't it really interesting that last week you told me, despite the fact they won their biggest majority for almost ever, that there was this sort of weird sensation at the Labour Party conference? And you'd think today everybody would be sat there in Birmingham, oh, this is an absolute disaster. But there seems to be a greater vibe. Is yeah. this because the Labour Party have messed up so dramatically in the first three months, do you think? That's definitely part of it. I mean, certainly at Labour yesterday, uh, last week, I should say, there was there were a lot of long faces and the fact that even after, as you say, 11 or 12 weeks, really there wasn't a huge sense of momentum. Whereas, uh, certainly, when it comes to here in Birmingham, there's a sense of something that's happening. There is a leadership contest going on and renewal and all the rest of it. Look, the Conservatives were absolutely uh, trounced in the election. They know that, they've talked about that. But they're saying, how do they pick themselves up? How do they make themselves into an electoral force again? Uh, I'm just seeing Robert Jenrick walking past me here. Uh, we can't right, Rob, has been how are you, as well. lots of well, he, he, I'm sure he sends his warm regards back, uh, Jeremy, but, yeah, strange uh, having been in this situation where you're uh, waiting uh, in this conference centre and seeing a lot of them. And actually, every time Kemi Badenoch walks, she gets a round of applause around as well, so it's an interesting place to be. It's interesting as well. Uh, I said earlier, um, we were just on with James Price, and he said that, that Badenoch probably early doors, right, would be would be somebody who was ahead of the game. But actually, that's changed now. Jenrick seems to be... And I was just making the point earlier that, that maybe the Tory party... You can look at it two ways. You can think that left and right will cancel each other out. And like Cameron, somebody will come through the middle, like Tugan out, like cleverly. But to me, it's a bit quiet. It's a bit of the same. It doesn't tend to jump out. Doesn't somebody need to get this bloody party by the scruff of the neck and listen to what the British people want? And much as I like Badenoch, she seems to talk about ideology more than she talks about the things that 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 people are interested in and there's no doubt pete you know this i know that people want to talk about immigration they want to talk about crime they want to talk about what's happening in the world with our military they want to talk about tax they want to talk about the color of your skin and women's and matern do they i don't know maybe i'm missing the point is she I, I i think she's losing it the way she's talking that would be my opinion I think there's probably quite a lot in that as well. Certainly the big row over the last couple of days or last 24 hours, really, in regard to maternity pay, well, that hasn't helped her. It shows yet again that she is a controversial character and someone who does say controversial things that people either interpret, misinterpret, however you want to characterise it. Robert Jenrick is more of a sort of smoother character. He's more on the right as well. And really, Tom Tugendhat and uh, certainly James Cleverley more on the left or the Liberal wing of the Conservative Party. So if you have... If you have Jenrick versus Badenoch, well, that's something slightly different. That's, a, I, I think, a lot of the One Nation types, a lot of the more liberal, uh, centrist types in the Conservatives, well, they will probably feel they'll have to vote for Cammy Badenoch. So that might actually help her, depending on what happens. But it's really all to play for. I think Tugendhat is probably too far behind. But if Cleverly makes a really good speech, makes a big impression over the next few days, he could find himself in the final two. We'll <laughs> see. It's, but it, it is, there's a lot, a lot shifting. And how exciting is it being at Tory party conference? Because, I mean, I, I spent 15 years in Birmingham. It's a very exciting place, isn't it? <laughs> well, listen, the people of Birmingham have given us a very warm welcome. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm staying in, in the Chinatown area. I sadly haven't bumped into Jack Berry, uh, who uh, could have invited me for a drink, and I could have said, forget it, Jack, it's Chinatown.
Oh, jeez, it gets worse. Can we just talk about Starmer? No day goes past when on this we wonderful can't. station we have something to beat that idiot over the head with. Today, uh, Lord Backalley apparently has a £4 million Soho penthouse as well as a £18 million Covent Garden one, and they've been using that all year. I, I, I said just then to James, I said it to you, he said they're not they're like that that's what the people who think they're morally better than the Tories and everybody on the right is are they not interesting or listening to the optics and how it's going down mate because these people are i mean by the hour are losing the respect of even the people that voted for them and i'm not sticking up for the Tories who have been an absolute shower but honestly I've, it's so cack handed pal isn't it Look, I used to work in political communications. The thing that if there's a scandal, you get everything out in the open as quickly as possible. You flood the media with information so they have it all. So it's not this drip, drip, drip that is happening at the moment. In, in fairness, there's nothing really wrong with the fact that Lord Ali had a £4 million house and Labour used it. I'm not sure there's something particularly wrong with that in opposition, although there are questions about where Cabinet access talks, as access talks, uh, talking about planning for government actually happened. So I think there this is not going to go away and Starmer doesn't seem to get it and a lot of members of his government including in Liverpool last week just didn't seem to get how this looks especially to people you know swanning around in four million pound houses going off to New York for a break paid for by somebody else having clothes paid for by someone else most people don't live in this world most people live in a world where you're saying how much money have I got to get to the end of the week what's my winter fuel allowance oh the mm -hmm. government's taking this away yeah actually there are a lot of hard choices that people have to make and a lot of people feel that the government the previous government, the Conservatives, a lot of people feel didn't get it. That's why they voted them out. They want to change with Labour. Labour promised change, but are they actually delivering it? That's the question that people will make. Keir Starmer is still the most popular uh, politician in this country, but that's a bit like saying which is the tallest of Snow White housemates. A lot of politicians are very, very unpopular. That's my greatest analogy. Now, listen, boy, when you go back to your digs tonight, don't go to Broad Street to the casino, because I know what you like. You like a game of craps, don't you? You behave yourself.